In this video, we're going to talk about how to convert an incoming square wave into a triangular wave. The incoming square wave can be produced by the 555 timer circuit. And I have another video that shows you how you can uh, generate that waveform. Now, if you connect that to this RC network, you can convert it to a triangular wave if you choose the right values for R and C. So I'm going to show you some pictures with some different values of R and C. So with these pictures, R is set to 220 ohms and the capacitance, it's going to vary with different values. So here is a picture of a handheld digital oscilloscope. And this is the signal at the input. As you can see, it's an incoming square wave with a duty cycle of approximately 50%. Now this picture represents the output signal when R is set to 220 ohms and C is set to 0.1 microfarads. So we still have, for the most part, a square wave, but you can see it's a little bit distorted. Now let's see what happens as we increase the value of C. So as we increase C from 0.1 microfarads to 1 microfarads, we get this particular waveform. It's no longer a square wave, nor is it a triangular wave. You can see here the capacitor is charging, and then it is discharging. And the amplitude, for the most part, is still about 7 volts. Each block represents a voltage of 5 volts. Now, as we continue to increase the capacitance and the RC value overall, note how the amplitude is going to decrease and how the waveform is going to change. So pay attention to these things. So with this picture, R is still 220 ohms, but the capacitance that I'm using is 2.2 microfarads. As you can see, it's not a perfect triangle, but it looks more triangular than the one before. And notice the peak to peak voltage is no longer seven. It's, it varies from one to about 6.5. So right now it looks like the peak to peak voltage is about 5.5 volts. So as we increase the RC constant, the shape is becoming more triangular, but we're losing amplitude in the process. Now for this picture, I'm using a capacitance of 3.3 microfarads. So the shape is more triangular than before, and the amplitude has been reduced slightly. But nevertheless, this is, for the most part, a decent triangular shape. Now for this picture, I've increased the capacitance to 10 microfarads. As you can see, the amplitude has been greatly reduced, but we do get a better triangular waveform. Now granted, it does appear wide, but you could reduce the time frame. Right now, it's set to two milliseconds per block on a horizontal axis. So by reducing it, you can make the triangular waveform appear more narrow than what it appears to be on the screen. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go back to our circuit diagram. How do we know which values of R and C that we should use if we want to convert a square wave into a triangle wave? We need to have a process of figuring this out because we don't want to play the guess and check game when designing a circuit. It turns out that if you set one time constant of the RC network equal to the period of the incoming square wave, you can get a decent triangular wave without really sacrificing much amplitude. The period of the incoming square wave is 1 over F. It's 1 over the frequency. And let's say if we select the value of C and want to calculate a value of R, what we need to do is solve for R. And we could do so by multiplying both sides by 1 over C. So R is going to be approximately, this is not really an exact science here, but this is a good approximation of R. It's 1 over FC or 1 over CF. So let's say if the incoming square wave has a frequency of 300 hertz. And let's say the capacitance is 3.3 microfarads. What value of R should we use if we want to get a good triangle waveform? Well, let's do the math. So let's plug in the frequency, which is 300 hertz. 
and the capacitance, which is 3.3 microfarads, or 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And you should get 10,010 ohms. So in this case, we could use a 1 kilo ohm resistor with the 3.3 microfarad capacitor. And that will give us a decent triangular waveform if the frequency is 300 hertz. Now let's talk about how we can convert an incoming square wave into a sine wave. So instead of using one RC network, we need to filter out the signal using three RC networks. So this is the first RC network. This is going to be the second one. And this is going to be the third one. Now, because we have three RC filters, the amplitude is going to be greatly reduced. So keep that in mind. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the same values for R for the three resistors and the same value of C for the three capacitors. And to get the appropriate R and C values, we could use the same formula. It's going to be 1 over FC. Now, it could be more or less than that value, but that's just a, a good approximation of where you want to start. And then you could adjust accordingly to get the best sine wave possible. So let's say this is the incoming square wave at the input with a fairly large amplitude. Now let's put our ground symbol and let's call this point A, point B, and point C. Now if we connect a digital oscilloscope to point A with respect to ground, we're going to get the triangular the triangular, rather, waveform that looks like this with a slightly reduced amplitude compared to the square wave. Now at point C, we're going to get a sine wave, but the amplitude is going to be greatly reduced. We're talking about somewhere between 20 and 50 millivolts. And for this example, I'm going to use an R value of 1 kilo ohm and a capacitance of 3.3 microfarads where the incoming frequency is at 315 hertz. And so you get a sine wave that looks like this. At point B, you get something in between a triangular waveform and a sine wave with an amplitude that's somewhere between these two values. So that's how you can make a sine wave from an incoming square wave. It's by using an RC filter network with three stages. Now let's put everything together. So what we have here is the 555 timer circuit, which can help us to create a square wave at point A. Pin 3 is the output pin of the 555 timer. Let's call this point B, and we're going to call this point C, and point D. So if we choose the appropriate values for R1, R2, and C1, we can get a nice square wave at point A. And then at point B, we can get a good triangular wave if we choose the appropriate R and C values. At point D, we can get a sine wave with a reduced amplitude. But you may need to connect that to an amplifier if you want to do something useful with it. Now let's talk about the frequency of the square wave at point A. So that frequency depends on the values of R1, R2, and C1. It's approximately equal to 1.44 R1 plus 2 R2 times C1. Now, you want to get a nice square wave with a duty cycle of 50, let me say that again, with a duty cycle of 50%. That means that the output is going to be on 50% of the time, and it's going to be off 50% of the time. So let's say it's on for 1 millisecond. It should be off for 1 millisecond. The duty cycle is the time that it's on compared to the total cycle time. So it's on for one millisecond, and the total cycle time is the sum of these two, which is two milliseconds. So that will be a duty cycle of 50%, which means that the wave is on 50% of the time. 
the formula to calculate the duty cycle of the incoming square wave, or at point A, is this formula. It's R1 plus R2, and then that's going to be divided by R1 plus 2R2 times 100%. Now, to get a duty cycle of 50%, you want R2 to be significantly larger than R1. You want R2 to be about at least 100 times R1. Because if it's 100 times R1, R1 becomes insignificant in the equation. So you get 1 over R2 divided by 2 over R2, which is 1 half. Because let's say if you have a million plus 10,000, that's a million and a thousand. That's still a million. So R2 plus R1 is approximately R2 if R2 is significantly larger than R1. So let's say you decide to set R1 to 10 kilo ohms. You want R2 to be 100 times that amount. So 100 times 10 kilo ohms is 1,000 kilo ohms or 1 mega ohm. With these two values, you'll get a duty cycle of 50%. So now that you know R1 and R2, what you can do is you can adjust C1 to get the appropriate frequency. So once you have your value of C1, you'll have a square wave with a certain frequency. And then from there, you want to choose your R values given a certain C value. So it's going to be 1 over F times C. So once you have F, after choosing appropriate C1 value, you can now plug that in with a new C value for these three capacitors and determine the appropriate R value so that you can get a triangular waveform at point B and a sine wave at point D. So that's how you can make a simple waveform generator using the 555 timer circuit. So here is a picture of the sine wave that I got at point D using the 555 timer circuit with the three capacitors being set to 3.3 microfarads and the three resistors being set to one kilo ohm. So notice the voltage here is 20 millivolts per vertical block, which means that the peak to peak amplitude of the sine wave is close to 40 millivolts. And you can see it doesn't look perfect because this oscilloscope has a limit in terms of its sensitivity at these low voltages. But nevertheless, we do have, for the most part, a sine wave at point D. So now you know how to make a sine wave from a square wave.